Next one up, we have Mary Lou. And I think, I can't really quite remember which Vision Weekend it was, but I got aware, made, well, I was made aware of your TED Talk uh, because many people were just like, well, this can't be true. <laughs> um, but then it turned out it was true. And uh, you've joined a few Vision Weekends in the past and just recently um, were able to raise another $50 million for your fantastic efforts. So I'm really delighted and excited to um, for you to share with us a little bit about what it is that you've been working on uh, so furiously. And you say you even have a few prototypes with you, which uh, will be even the better. Thank you so, so much for joining us again. Um, and yeah, please come up on stage. Thank you. So I do have prototypes. Zooming out from the neuroconnectome, which was astonishing. Thank you. 25% um, of the health of our economy in the US is healthcare and the solution to it isn't murdering healthcare CEOs the solution is make it better faster and cheaper and that's what we're trying to do with this handheld hospital it's open source you can all help you can all get the components you can all do it your own way that's what I'm going to talk about. So I left Facebook I'm a serial entrepreneur um, of hard tech and I've started multiple multi-billion dollar companies or products, former MIT professor, Brown University PhD in physics. So when I start a company, I start building in labs like this. This is this new, now nine-year-old company. We built like this for four years in labs here in San Francisco, looking at how we could use the fact that infrared light, ultrasound, and electromagnetics penetrate our body and modulating the phase of light and sound to steer it, to resonate selectively collecting cells, and to decode the interference of phase to get more information than just from amplitude. We got pretty far, we built up some carts, got into hospitals in early 2020. We all remember what happened then. So we were in the ERs at that time studying stroke victims and found that we could, with these carts, we get better specificity and sensitivity for seeing large vessel occlusion stroke than any other method. That's a really big deal. Stroke's the number two killer in the world, 6.5 million deaths a year. There's 5% of the hospitals in the US that can give you the procedure that you want. By law, that ambulance goes to the nearest hospital. You're dead. Unless we can direct you to the right hospital and get the cath lab open. While we were doing that, we realized Maybe we could cure cancer. So we started with organoids and then we moved into mice and we're able to shrink and move mice into remission of a 100% deadly form of cancer called glioblastoma. But this has implications for all cancer. All aggressive cancers have big nucleuses, small cytoplasms, and thus a different resonant frequency. So using a diagnostic dose of ultrasound at the right frequency, we were able to shake apart cancer cells but not harm any healthy cells. While we were waiting to get into humans for that, we changed up the frequency, stopped the overfiring neurons of patients with severe treatment-resistant depression and moved nearly half of them into remission. And at that point, we said, huh, it's time to go get some more money, raise $54 million, open source the company, and shrunk those carts into these devices that I have with me today. I only have seven minutes, I'll show it to you afterwards. And um, made them available. It's AGPL, Creative Commons, 4.0 share alike, all 68 of our patents free for everybody to use with pan disease impact. Now what I'm saying sounds kind of impossible, but the more impossible thing is changing the healthcare system quickly. The average cost over the last 30 years for every single complex therapeutic medical device that was approved by the FDA, average cost $658 million, average time 13 years. That's why we don't have new novel treatments. For drugs, it's worse. It's 26, million, 26 years and $3 billion, and that doesn't even include reimbursement or moving to standard of care. But 85% of that cost is in the device development itself, unlike drugs. And 7% is in the safety. So we, we lower the cost by 93%, and that's capitalized cost. Approvals, sub $5 million, sub two years, according to our hypothesis, based on all the data we have of what it's taken before. So how does this work? 
Again, beam steering with waves. We use the waves of light. Here we have cancer cells hiding them out amid healthy neurons. We excite them like an opera singer can excite this wine glass and destroy the wine glass but harm nothing else in the room, not even the ears. We found the right frequencies using organoids and going through frequency sweeps to compress and expand just the cancer cells with great results. And we also did that with neurons at different frequencies, 400 kilohertz. Again, diagnostic dose lower than used on pregnant women and their fetuses for the last 50 years. This is not a new drug that never existed before. This is ultrasound used safely on 10 billion people over the last, dec over the last 100 years. We also use light. We've shrunk a laser the size of the room down to a component. And with it, we can see blood flow more accurately than a multi-million dollar MRI machine. We use camera chips and a smartphone that can see in the infrared and a laser that pulses light in a single frequency. We can see the interference change as we interrogate the blood, blood cell and we see the patterns change and we look at that with histograms. We can even see the boom boom of your heart. This is what the actual image on the camera chip looks like. We decode that information. But the big thing is enabling you all to get this, flipping this vertical integration on its side to make an app, like on an Android phone, a regulatory approval. And so I usually have to answer how we make money. But basically, if you make more of something, it's cheaper. It's a slight exaggeration to say 10x more of something is 10x cheaper. But we enjoy a portion of that as our profit. We engender trust and stop the 20 to 40 year innovation moats effectively caused by a lack of data because each new device has to be handmade. Um, and we, we make it with a quality standard that's IRB and FDA ready. It's called ISO 13485. It's a pain in the neck, but we think it's worth it. It enables innovation. Anybody can change this any way they wish to. The safety sharing. What would a regulator do with 100 times more safety data than they've ever had before? Would that make their job easier or harder? Would it make the job of a doctor and a patient trying to decide if they should take a treatment or not easier or harder? Obviously, yes, in each case. So here's a bit what our products look like. And um, we did announce recently, this is the inside of Vitalik Buterin's brain. He did an MRI scan for me. It was a low resolution MRI scan. And we picked a target we wanted to hit that would just make him happy. If he was any depressed, we could hit this target in the anterior synchroid. We scanned him in on our phone rather than using a $300,000 machine and created a mesh of his head. This is Vitalik's head, it's a mesh. And then we registered it to the bone his bone structure to that of the MRI. I'm ready to go. So, um, so here we just focus, we, we knew where the transducers were and could then focus on the spot that we wanted to and really just hit that exact target to millimeter accuracy. We can do that anywhere in the body. It's all free, it's open source. If you want it, you can just have it. Go to our website, buy it. Don't buy it, use the plans, make your own, whatever. Thank you. Ooh. We have time for at least one question. Okay, I guess um, you definitely have some takers here, Andrea. I'll get to you. Wow, <laughs> that was impressive. So I just have maybe a naive question, it's more a curiosity. So I think that technology you know, is growing, and diagnostic especially, is growing exponentially. But there is, again, a gap between healthcare system and like the development of the, this tool. So what do you think and how long do you think it would take until this device could actually be implemented like in our daily life so that doctors can be trained to use this device to actually have more accurate diagnostics? Uh, we'll be in 100 clinical trials next year, maybe even 1,000 for scale. CRISPR, 10 years old, won the Nobel Prize is in about 100. The regulatory approvals can happen fast. 
at scale in about two years, the cost of these devices will be about $1,000 and the treatment and the cost of a phone call. So if you think of it, smartphone, we're using the very factories to democratize for rich and poor, um, independent of border and country that you're from. Thank you. Like we do in consumer electronics. Thank you.